I am once again giving away all of my secrets. Like the rest of the nail world, I've recently been obsessed with airbrush and aura nails, but mastering a perfect gradient is like a whole science experiment in and of itself. So in this video, I'm sharing six different techniques you can do to achieve an airbrush look on nails. Five of which, by the way, do not involve an actual airbrush, so you should be able to implement at least one of these with what you already have in your kit. I've been using one of these techniques constantly, and on my last video, one single person asked me if I could do a tutorial on it, and frankly, that's all it takes. Each of these techniques has its own pros and cons and advantages and drawbacks, but before I get into the first one, there's one art theory that we need to understand, and that is opacity. Opacity refers to the degree to which something allows light to pass through it. In the context of materials like paint, opacity describes how much the material blocks the background or underlying surface. By smoothly transitioning from opaque to sheer or translucent, we create a gradient. If you can keep this in mind, you will be able to create the smoothest gradients and get the airbrush look with and without an airbrush. So let's apply this theory to our first technique, which is using pigment powder. Creating an aura with pigment is achieved by using dry pigment powder on top of cured matte gel. For this technique, you're going to need pigment, looser pressed, a matte gel, and a sponge and or brush. I'm starting by applying a matte top coat to my base color, and you want to make sure that this coat is in a really even layer. Matte top coats can tend to be a bit streaky if you apply them too thinly, and this will show up in the pigment powder if you're not careful. So apply an even layer and then cure for a full minute so there's no like tacky parts left for the powder to adhere to. So these are my two tools that I'm using. I'm using both a sponge and a brush to show you the difference. I'm picking up just a tiny bit of this powder and then tapping off any excess and trying to get the powder evenly throughout the bristles before I even touch the nail. And then I will just lightly start tapping the pigment to the center of the nail and slowly brushing it and feathering it outward. It tends to be easier to add more pigment than it does to try to take it off. You kind of have to wipe it all off and start over. So I encourage to start small and slowly build up in color. So simple, so easy, looks great. And then here I am very gently floating a top coat onto the nail because if you're not careful and you put too much pressure on your brush, you're going to pull the pigment powder and it's again going to create streaks. Pigment is a really simple and easy way to create a one color gradient. However, if you want multiple colors layered, this is where things get a little bit trickier with pigment because powder doesn't really stick to powder. If you want, let's say, blue on top of a pink, in an aura, you're going to have to apply another layer of matte top coat, as I'm doing here, and then go back in with another color. So this is one downside to pigment, and obviously multiple layers can start to add bulk to the nail. But overall, if you wanted to, as I'm going to kind of show here, I'm going to half layer this blue on top of the pink and half just put it on the other side. If you want to just have different colors beside each other and blend them together, pigment is so good for that. But it's just the layering of colors on top of colors to create depth that's harder with pigment powder. So here's the final result. It looks great. It's super seamless. And we're moving on to the next one. Floating a gradient is the technique of laying down a slip layer and then floating additional gel on top to increase opacity in the center. You'll need a glass or syrup gel as we're going to rely on their sheerness to create the gradient. I'm starting by laying down a very thin slip layer to the center of the nail, leaving a small border around the edges of the base color. I just do this with the built-in brush and push the gel to the edges of the nail. Once the slip layer has self-leveled, we're going to float a drop of gel into the wet slip layer dead center. Because gel follows gel, the drop we apply will slowly melt into the slip layer, creating our gradient. Your biggest friend, however, is gravity. So once you float the gel onto the slip layer, turn the nail upside down and allow gravity to pull the gel to the center of the nail. Flip it back over to even it out, and if you were happy with it, cure it. I felt like I moved fast in that, so I'm going to show you it again, but this time with the syrup gel. First starting out by playing the slip layer down, and in this one you'll really see how uneven the slip layer is initially. Again, importantly, if your slip layer is a bit uneven, Hold it upside down, which does two things. One, it pulls all the excess gel from the edges of your slip layer to the center. And two, it gives it a minute to self-level. If applied correctly, the results of this technique are insane. You can literally tell that there's depth to the nail, which is something that's hard to achieve with the other techniques. The second reason I'm obsessed with this technique is that while creating a gradient, it also creates an apex on the nail, adding a beautiful shape and additional strength. So here I'm trying to show how hard it is to distinguish where the milky white starts and ends, which is what you're trying to achieve. You can kind of still see the bumps from where I've applied it, but this will be taken care of as I apply the top coat and that will all get evened out. So here's the final result. They look so good. I'm obsessed. And I think the only thing to note is that this might be a lot harder to do on a real life human who's like moving around, but for press ons, it's so fun. Sponging is one of the most common ways to achieve an ombre. There are, however, a couple of important tips to make sure it's seamless, so let's go over them. 
you are going to need a dense sponge and a solid gel color. And these are both two really important things. Emphasis on the dense sponge. You'll see here, I am showing that this sponge has next to no air pockets or bubbles. If you have a less dense sponge, it's gonna create air bubbles in your gel and it's just not gonna be as smooth of a gradient. So you're gonna dip your sponge into the gel and then just tap the shit out of it until you get a really, really thin, even layer. And only then do you take your sponge and tap it onto the nail. Because I'm using a really highly pigmented gel, you can see the color right away, but I will often do two colors and then slowly build the opacity into the center or uh, flash curing in between. Or if you want to switch colors and create an aura, you can do that as well. And it's really easy to switch between colors, just flash cure in between. The reason we're using a really opaque or opaque gels is because we're able to get the layers so thin with the sponge that if you were to use something like a syrup gel, it would take like 18 layers to build up enough opacity to even see it. I low key don't love this blue. I wish I chose a different color, but uh, once you're happy with the look of it, cure it. And then we're going to apply top coat. And unlike pigment powder, we don't have to be precious about this and you can just apply it as you normally would. Here's the final result. Honestly, my execution was a bit poor, but you can do better. Airbrushing is the technique of using a air powered machine to atomize acrylic paint onto the nail. I could probably make a whole video about airbrushing and I just might, but today we're just gonna stick to the basics. So what you'll need is an airbrush machine and acrylic airbrush paint. I actually made this airbrush paint, hold. sorry, and diluted it down to about a milk consistency. There are some major pros and cons to airbrushing. A major pro is that it is just the most seamless way to create gradients. It is stunning, it dries quickly, you can layer and create depth and have big gradients and small gradients. A downside, however, is that it's kind of a pain in the ass. It's a bit of a hassle to like pull out the airbrush to clean it, to switch between colors, um, and it can be a bit finicky if you don't know how to use an airbrush or to learn how to use an airbrush. But look at those results. It's literally stunning. It's hard to replicate. Maybe I'll talk more about airbrushing in another video, but if you wanna learn more, go watch all of the men on the internet who are making like Warhammer painting videos. That's how I learned. Blooming gel is essentially the technique of using a base layer that allows anything that's applied on top of it to dissipate and or bloom outwards. For this technique, you're gonna need blooming gel and really any color gel to place on top. So I started by adding a thin layer of blooming gel and then a dot of syrup uh, gel, two dots of syrup gel directly into the wet blooming gel on top of one another and then giving them a minute to bloom outwards. For the context of this video, blooming gel is probably my least favorite technique, just because I find it adds too much bulk to the nail and you can't create very big auras, but I did want to include it because it is an option. If anyone has recommendations for a good blooming gel, I am all ears because I feel like I see people do snake and crock print and they just don't have the same bulk to the nails that I'm getting with this blooming gel. Once the gel spread out enough, I cured it and then here I'm just adding a top coat. Here's the final result. I really could have picked colors with a higher contrast, but alas. Moving on to the final technique, which is to feather. Feathering is pulling small amounts of gel from the center outwards slowly until you create a gradient. I do this manually with a gradient brush. This technique also works best with a syrup or glass gel. Similar to the float technique, we're relying on the sheerness of these gels to help us build the gradient seamlessly. I'm just going to start by adding a drop of the gel I'm using to the center of the nail, and then I'm going to go in with the gradient brush and very slowly start to pull the gel outward radially. And this can take a couple minutes and you'll see me kind of just spin the nail around and around. Again, this might be harder to do on a real life person because you're probably having to move your wrist rather than their hand in circles. Eventually, you'll get it to a point where it looks like this and you can kind of pull the gel outwards and back in towards the center if you're feeling like it's coming too far to the edges. Here I'm flash curing it and then going in with another color layering on top. The technique has a lot of similarities to the float technique, but unlike the float technique, with this one you can actually go in with another color because you're able to get the layers pretty thin and cure it in between. And you'll notice we're about to fix all of those little edges here with the top coat. So if it looks messy around the edges, don't worry about it. You can fix it with top coat. However, if you are not using a syrup or glass gel and you see like brush strokes of color, you're not gonna be able to hide that. So that's why a syrup and glass gel is important with this technique. If you found any of this information helpful, please take one second and give the video a like. It helps me out a lot. 
and let me know between pigment, float, sponge, airbrush, blooming gel, and feather which one uh, you find yourself leaning towards most if you learned anything. And thank you for allowing me to do a video that's a little bit different from what I normally do. And a quick apology for using the terms airbrush, gradient, or an ombre rather interchangeably throughout this video. But hopefully you got the point. If there's any other like nail art techniques you want me to talk about, I will be happy to do so. I am absolutely no excerpt, but we can figure it out together.